Hi, yes, it's back. Everyone's favorite segment, the mailbag. I've got so many people <laughs> complaining, when is the next mailbag segment? And if you've been following my tweets, you'll know that, look at this, it's been building up and building up. Sorry about that, folks. I just haven't had time with the uh, Christmas and New Year break and everything else, and uh, that's been happening, so I'm gonna get to it. But look at this, it's ridiculous. There are no less than 15 uh, items plus two postcards to get through. So I'm obviously not going to do it in this video. It's going to need, um, you know, oh, I don't know, three or four videos to get through all this lot. And I know what's in some of these things and they will require videos in their own right because they deserve like a little mini review or uh, something like that. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Get to it. Let's go. Sorry if you see your package here and I'm not going to open it on this video. It will eventually get done. And rather than just open things randomly and willy-nilly here, I thought I'd implement, at least at the start, a LIFO buffer or a last-in, first-out buffer. And this is the last one that arrived. And it is addressed to Dave, PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia. Not Austria. And guess who it's from, folks? None other than fellow blogger Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff. Hey, Mike. And I haven't disguised his address because I'm sure he'd want you to send him stuff too. <coughs> Triple Five Timer Avenue, Upper Sideband, Essex, UK. I'm sure it would get there. <coughs> anyway, thanks, Mike. He's got his uh, trademark little uh, laser symbol here and it's just got card. So let's crack this sucker open. I think I know what this one is because, hang on, got to get my Swiss Army knife out of my pocket. And... Uh, he mentioned this on the forum. I'm going to have a guess that it is one of his little prototyping PCBs because it feels like a PCB about yay big. It feels like 1.6 millimeter. Flex is like a 1.6 millimeter board. So I'm assuming it's one of his prototyping boards that he showed off. May not be. Could be wrong, but uh, let's have a look. Come on, get out of here. Aha, big scary laser. Do not look into beam with the remaining eye. Which apparently, um, that was um, on the Big Bang Theory in the uh, laser lab. Um, there, apparently, they used Mike's... Uh, that's his uh, design. Yep, it is. It's one of his prototype boards. Ta-da! Here we go. Hi, Dave. A late Christmas. Euro card for you. A while ago, I got annoyed that nobody made a proto board with all the stuff I wanted at a sensible price. So I made my own. Of course you do. That's what everyone does. This is the Mark III version. See whitewing.co.uk proto board for documentation. Yeah, documentation on a proto board. Brilliant. Yeah, because you need it. You know what to use, I guess. What's he stuck that down with? Oh, that's pretty horrid. Hang on. Not sure what that's stuck down with. Some sort of double-sided gum. Oh, no, yeah, what is it? Double-sided tape or something. Oh, that's a bit of a fail, Mike. Oh, yep, that's a, uh, I wouldn't use that again. Oh, no, it does, it does peel off. It's just a bit annoying, that's all. There we go. And here it is with a printout from Mike's uh, website showing all of the details on this thing. This is just the details on the... Um, upper side here. It's got an upper side and a lower side with um, slightly different, uh, well, some extra stuff on the bottom half. So um, if you want to check out the layout of this thing thoroughly, check out the uh, Mike's website because it documents this thing, as he said. Um, yeah, yeah, really, um, it's nice to have documentation for a proto board like this. And this one looks incredibly flexible. I really like it. Um, not a fan of the white uh, solder mask, I've uh, got to admit, but um, anyway, it uh, does contain a hell of a lot of functionality, probably more functionality than I've ever seen on a proto board. And you can see that he's got red, uh, he's got the red silk screen around here showing you on the top side here, showing you that like those three bars are shorted together and that, uh, and the, this uh, gold plated trace, of course, obviously goes right around here. It shows that this bar here is all joined and common all the way up there and it really is 
beautiful work of art. Well done, Mike, I like it. And as for the features, well, there's more features than you can poke a crow probe at. Unbelievable. We've got um, a DIN 41612 connector along this side down here. We've got a, um, a standard uh, DC uh, power jack up here. We've got a couple of uncommitted power rails. We've got um, 1.27 millimeter or uh, 50 mil SMD area. So that does all your standard um, SMD packages all the way down there. I'll oh, get rid of the board. There we go. Um, two uncommitted power rails down here. We've got a uh, 0.5 millimeter flat flex cable connector down here. More uncommitted power rails, ground rails. We've got a, a 0.5 millimeter uh, pin pitch uh, TSOP 16 there. We've got some um, uh, uh, what looks like a 78 um, XX regulator, which then uh, breaks into the power rails, I think. Great stuff, I like it. Or you can put a SOT23 regulator, the microchip MCP-170X series, and I use those quite a bit, and they're, they're brilliant. Um, we've got another DC uh, power jack down the bottom here. We've got uh, different pitch uh, terminal blocks. 1.27 millimeter staggered row, RJ45, RJ11 um, footprints. Oh, we've got D connector footprints, 9, 15, 25 way Ds. We've got um, two millimeter header connectors up here. Oh, man, unbelievable. It's got everything. And on the bottom, we've got even more here. I didn't print out the other one, but uh, he's got labeled 0.65 millimeter uh, pin pitch. SMD, we've got 0.5 millimeter pin pitch, and we've got uh, two one millimeter flat flex um, connectors down here as well. So that is one Bobby Dazzler of a prototyping board. I highly recommend you get some. Um, great things to have lying around when the uh, proverbial brown stuff hits the fan and you need to prototype something quickly. These things are a absolute um, must have in your toolbox. So this is great. I think it's about uh, 19, 16 uh, UK pounds for two or um, 19 UK pounds that includes postage, I believe, anywhere in the world. Beauty, Mike. And of course, you've got all your standard uh, 0.1 inch uh, pitch uh, through holes through here with the two power rails running under the IC. So you'd put your IC across the power rail like that and then it breaks off into two pins. So if you had a standard uh, footprint uh, dip package there at the plug in there and you get two extra pins either side more than enough and it's postcard time and this one is from Jersey and well not New Jersey folks um I had to look up Jersey I didn't know what it was it is a um, officially according to the Wikipedia page it is the uh, Ballywick of Jersey is the correct correct uh, name of that a little um, island off the coast of uh, Normandy in uh, France there, if uh, you know your war history, we know all about Normandy there. So um, this one comes from Brad. Hey Brad, and hey Dave, keep up the great work with EEV blog. I've reacquainted myself with electronics since watching your videos. I'm a field service engineer by day, so keeping my hand in electronics and design since leaving uni nearly 20 years ago has been tough. But thanks to your blog, I'm now learning more. Excellent, thank you very much, Brad. That is awesome, and let's take a look at the stamp here. We've got a stamp from Jersey, from a Jersey Post, 70. I'm not sure what their currency is. I forgot to look that up. And that is uh, Normont Tower, by the looks of it. I like that. So there you go. Jer Jersey is a um, uh, British um, dependency or something like that. So its history is very uh, complicated. It's not... Um, apparently part of the uh, the United uh, Kingdom. It's um, sort of separate in some way. So I don't know, go check out the Wikipedia article on Jersey. And you've got to wonder, being a field service engineer on the Isle of uh, Jersey, um, how much work is there, Brad? Please let us know in the comments. How much electronics industry is there on a small island like that? I'd love to know. Next up, we have another postcard from Malaysia. I do like postcards, folks, so please uh, send them to me. I'm going to have to set up like a wall with uh, postcards on it. And if I can get like hundreds and hundreds of them, I'll 
probably try and uh, plaster them all over my wall. That'd be awesome. Um, I uh, Technically, I've been to Malaysia, but only for a uh, stopover. So I've never actually uh, um, had a good look around Malaysia at all. And it's from, if I can pronounce this correctly, Abdulaziz Salmin. Thank you very much, Abdul, I'll call you for short. Or Abzi, I don't know. Got to give you an Australian nickname, I guess. Hi, Dave. I know you like postcards and I wanted to send you one. Hope you like it. Thanks for the great channel. No wackers. Thank you very much. Malaysia. Stamp, we have a Bunga Tiga Bulan flower. Interesting. Looks very pretty. I like it. Malaysia, lovely country, I'm sure. Would love to go there one day. And of course that image on the front is the Kuala Lumpur skyline. It's a vista of ever-expanding high-rise buildings including the impressive Kuala Lumpur Tower and the Patronus Twin Towers. I've seen that and uh, that Spider-Man dude uh, climbed the Patronus uh, Twin Towers, I think. Unbelievable. And let's have a look at another one here. That crazy Aussie bloke. I wonder what the people at the post office uh, think of this. <laughs> they just keep seeing this all the time. Anyway, this is an Australian one. There we go. We've got an Australian... I don't know if that's a photo... Is that a photo or a watercolour? Not quite sure. Probably a photo. There we go, but uh, there is no return address on this one. So, ta-da! Mystery envelope. Let's have a look. It looks like there's just paper in here. It doesn't feel like there's anything else. So, I do wonder what it is. Wow, we've got schematic diagrams. Hi Dave, I volunteer at an op shop for school work experience and came across this schematic diagram. Instantly thought, I know who would like this, that crazy guy Dave from YouTube. I'm doing a quick do Google search and having a quick look at the schematic. I think it belongs to a Panasonic TV, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, given that it's a service, uh, uh, well, it's something from Panasonic. Let's take a look at it. Uh, oh, this is huge. Big A3 size. I don't know if I can get all this in the one shot. Hang on. There's my bare feet. Well, it's one of these fold-out ones. It's absolutely enormous. And uh, yes, it does look like something from a TV because, well, there's the picture tube. Okay. There's the drivers for the RGB. Let's have a look. We've got chroma, video, parts of the circuit. I love how they have the uh, waveforms on here and the... Uh, Voltages as well, drawn in blue, very, very nice. There's the earphone jack, sound out. Uh, what do we got down here? There's the flyback transformer. Yep, this is a TV. There's a deflection yoke. Yep, certainly is a TV. There's the sync. Uh, video um, IF stage, sound IF stage. There's the antenna, or the aerial, depends on what you want to call it. Wow, a LED, one LED has its own PCB with a dropper resistor, woohoo! And uh, there's our power supply circuit. There you go. Sorry, I'm just holding this thing in uh, free air here and um, there's, the, uh, <laughs> there's the switches on the front. So um, let's have a look. Printed in Japan and I just looked up the model number C2062 uh, and it's one of those um, little uh, combo uh, VCR uh, TV thing. So this is obviously just the uh, TV part of the circuit. There's no uh, VCR stuff here and at, at all. I mean, it's probably, you know, an entirely different uh, sub-assembly. Actually, I really like uh, this schematic. It is uh, well laid out. I might actually try and um, scan it. I have to scan it into uh, sections and I'll try and uh, put it up on the uh, site because it is, is a good example of a traditional analog uh, TV system and you know how it all works you know antenna in here and all the if stages and the traps and everything else and uh, um, you know how it converts that into a video signal to drive the crt so well worth looking into this thing so i'll try and scan it and have it ready in the links below when this video goes up and next cab off the rank here we have one from d cleary in salamander bay new south wales that's uh just north of here, up near Newcastle. Not to be confused with Newcastle in England, of course. So let's rip this sucker out. We'll just rip this open. Don't need the knife. Okay, what do we got here? We've got a note. Dave and Mike 
from Newcastle. There we go. Hey Dave, we noticed that JKR have added a new multimeter to their already quality range. Uh oh, folks. Of well engineered, in quote marks, products. <laughs> It'll set you back a whopping $4.95, so just how long a barge pole would need not to touch this. How many different ways can I kill it? Oh man. Thanks, Dave and Mike. Uh oh, folks. Oh, that is pathetic. That is pathetic. What a load of garbage. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, look at that. What is that? Oh. Shocking. Let's open this up. Well, I, I have no words. It's just a piece of absolute garbage. I'm not even going to turn the bloody thing on. Oh, well, yeah, okay, here we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah, look, it's got a high voltage warning. Yay! It's got, oh, it's got a 200 microamp range. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, right. And there's no cat rating on, of course. Absolute piece of garbage. And it's uh, max 500 volts DC, 200 milliamps. It's actually a shared uh, volts ohms milliamps um, jack, which is not good at all. I don't like those because you can accidentally switch it to amps and uh, short out your volts. So let's crack this thing open. Oh, what a turd. Look at that. One very unusual thing I don't think I've ever seen before, actually, um, is a 12 volt battery in a multimeter like this. Look at the crusty uh, 10 amp current shunt in there. What a load of garbage. A little 200 milliamp fuse soldered directly onto the board. Hey, at least they got one. The calibration trim pot in quote marks and a crusty um, chip on board and a couple of passives. Oh man, what an absolute tosser. And I assume we've got our integration capacitor there and well, that's all she wrote. We can probably take that out, but it's just absolutely going to be an absolute piece of crap on here. I mean, I'm not even going to insult my DC voltage standard by uh, hooking this piece of garbage up to it. Just, oh man, five bucks retail. I mean, JCar would be buying that for like a dollar fifty um, tops. And so, you know, unbelievable. Just no, don't, people, please. Oh, just looked at the back here. Security class Cat Two Two Hundred and Fifty. What the hell is security class? And Cat Two, blow it out your ass. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll include that with that uh, analog meter someone sent for the mailbag, you know, like a $2 analog meter or something. Um, I will add that to the uh, pile of meters that uh, must be destroyed in some creative way in a future video. Beauty. And we've got another Australian one from JP from Willoughby here in uh, Sydney. So let's crack this sucker open and see what we have got. JP, just initials, doesn't have a name. Maybe there's a name in the, ah, well, what have we got in here? Da -da. Oh, look at this, oh, is it a Christmas card? Hey, Santa, hey, Aussie Santa, there you go. Cockatoo, couple of koala bears, kangaroo, kidna, kookaburra, beauty. Hi Dave, just note of thanks for sharing your knowledge and expertise during the year. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. As Christmas is approaching, please accept this gift. Thank you very much. From George. Excellent. Thank you very much, George. Um, sorry for not opening this before Christmas, by the way. It's now 2013. And by the way, Happy New Year, everyone. Let's, oh, Pomona. Oh, we've got some Pomona test leads. Oh, beauty. Always like test leads. Oh, oh these are the filthy porn ones, folks. Oh, thank you very much, George. This is beautiful. Oh, look, you get the pins with it. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh just feel this. Oh, hang on. Oh, feel the, feel the silicon in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, check out these probes, folks. Absolutely beautiful. They are ultra, ultra tiny. Pomona, not sure what the model uh, number is. 
Uh, model number 6341, Precision Electronic Pro Probe with Stainless Steel Tip for Fluke, HP, Tektronix and Wavetech. <coughs> Wavetech. Geez, they're a bit, uh, bit old there. They are rated um, a 3 amp CAT 2, so they're not exactly um, going to set the world on fire for testing industrial um, you know, electronics and uh, industrial el electrical gear and stuff like that. But look at this. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Perfect for getting right down through the oxide coating and piercing stuff. So really, you know, designed for precision electronics, getting down and probing some pin of a 0.5 millimeter bastard, um, you know, a quad flat pack or something like that. So let's have a look at the uh, right angled banana plugs here nice strain relief in there I like it and really ultra thin leads very very thin and these things are just tiny they really are I love it and of course the probes just pull out like that and you can replace them and you get a bag of replacement probes which is brilliant and it looks like they've got some super duper long ones in here going to plug these in folks and uh, we'll have a look this is just absolutely insane <laughs> this is crazy look at the length of that would you that is just that is crazy absolutely nuts and you'll notice that these are actually uh, pogo ones so the action there is not inside the uh, probe uh, itself it's inside the pin so they're actually pogo pins there great stuff and if you compare the uh, length and size of those to the new fluke uh, TL175 probe that's the uh, one with the you know the rotating uh, cat 4 shroud on there like that but you can see the uh, the size difference in those huge difference these are fantastic for getting into those really tight spaces I love it always wanted a pair of these so uh, you know tiny little uh, precision probes like that they'll come in very handy thank you very much George it's awesome although I suspect if you're going to use this probe here I would uh, heat shrink most of that just uh, before it goes down to the tip there so you can slide it in and then really access through very tight um, you know uh, assembled products and things like that down to a specific test point but that's that's freaky and i just checked the price on these puppies these are 40 bucks us at digikey or a whopping 90 bucks at uh, farnell's here in australia so not um cheap probes at all but sex on a stick for really you know precision micro electronics work not for electrical work you wouldn't be uh, plugging these things into your main sockets these are only uh, you know cat cat 2 and not designed for measuring high currents but for that precision work oh. all right let's just check the all right let's just check the contact resistance repeatability of this thing shall we these all right let's just check all right we'll just check the contact resistance repeatability of these pogo pin uh, tips here so Let's probe this gold pad here, 0.238, and I'm moving those pogos up and down. So they're only, as I move those pogos up, pins up and down, they're, it's only varying by a couple of milliohms there. Not much at all. That's, that's very nice. I like it. And I will probably... <coughs> And I will probably get lynched if I don't at least open the largest package in my mailbag at the moment. I think we'll make this the last one. I'm probably already up to uh, 20, 25 minutes or something. So um, this one is from Elector. There we go. Elector, we've uh, seen them before. They uh, sent us a book. And, well, once again, we've got a book and an assembled board. I uh, claim they're only 10 uh, US bucks each, but that's probably for customs purposes so let's uh rip this sucker open is it another book by uh vincent perhaps like we saw last time i don't know it could be um it was sent by a lector so 
Ta-da! Here we go. What have we got? EU Proformer Invoice. <gasps> Mastering Surface Mount Technology. Brilliant. Hardware kit for testing. Oh, all right. Mastering Surface Mount Technology. Should be a neat little book. EV Blog. Dear Mr. Jones, in close, please find a review copy of a latest book in the LabWork series, Mastering Surface Mount Technology. We added the hardware kit for you to test a few projects yourself. I hope you enjoy the book and the hardware. Thrilled to see an interesting review of it on your blog. Thank you very much, Janine. Excellent. All right. Let's have a look. LabWorks. It's Vincent again. Hey, Vincent. He's, uh, Vincent is uh, Free Electron on the forum, the EEV blog forum. That's his handle. And uh, he makes some fantastic... If I can... Uh, die. Not Vincent, but this bloody plastic stuff. Yeah, Vincent makes some uh, excellent, awesome contributions to the forum. And... His uh, website, I believe, is uh, siliconvalleygarage.com. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to check that. Companion do-it-yourself kits available. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. Okay, let's read the forward. This book began as a collection of loose slides and notes about various aspects of surface mount technology. The idea is to give an overview of the tips, tricks, and methods when dealing with this technology, both production style and lab style techniques are shown in an attempt to give you a feel for what exists out there. As an enthusiast, engineer, or small-scale assembler that comes into contact with this technology, it is not always easy to figure out how to tackle the specific problems of dealing with these small-scale parts. You really don't need to break the bank or take out a second mortgage to effectively deal with these parts. This book will show you that service mount parts are nothing to be afraid of and that anyone can handle these with none to minimal investment. Excellent. No worries. Thank you very much, Vincent. Let's take a look at the table of contents because... That is going to tell all. We've got soldering iron stations, rework, hot air, BGA stations, reflow ovens, temperature and power, soldering tips, anatomy of a tip, ooh, prolonging tip life, um, heat gun nozzles, all the different types, probably for QFP and things like that. We're talking, we're getting down into paste, paste dispensers, stencils, stencil printers, flux, rosin core, no clean water fol soluble, ah, oh, soldering, spl uh, flux splattering, voiding, wetting, ah, oh, Man, flux remover, ultrasonic cleaners, fume extractors, oh yeah, um, solder wick, exact, oh, sorry, it's off camera, solder wick, exacto knife, magnifiers, uh, vision systems, x-ray systems, parts placement, oh man, it's all here. Bench top, a storage of all your components, stuff like that, trays, tape and reel, oh, ESD and ESD safety, covers everything. Commercial solutions, ESD strats, homegrown solutions for ESD, setting up an efficient workbench. Neat. I like it. Um, etching your own boards. Oh, PCB materials, the FR4 misnomer. Yep, that's a common one. I use it myself. I'm guilty. Um, uh, chemical processing, drilling. Oh, your multi layer boards, your solder mask, your silk screens, pitfalls with solder mask and silk screen. Oh, man. It's all here, ferric uh, etching with ferric chloride, um, ammonium persulfate and all that sort of jazz. Oh, sockets, SMD components, power ratings, value indications, resistor networks, footprints, oh, capacitor classifications for film. Oh man, Vincent, you've gone to town and we still haven't finished. This is ridiculous. Man, electrolytic caps, diodes, integrated circuits, all your different packages. Oh, scope probes, test clips, uh, zip sockets, Q oh man, look, seriously, this is, and then it gets into projects, of, ah, there you go, and that, that's it, full board, solder paste, stencil techniques, techniques for uh, hot air stations, blah blah blah, and then, it, yeah, we're into practical stuff now, so, making your own reflow oven controller from a pizza toaster, brilliant, that goes on for like eight pages or something, great, love it all right and uh, based on vincent's uh, previous book i'm sure it is um absolutely brilliant so got some history of uh, electronics there the various tools love it soldering irons fantastic i love it vincent good work can you please let us know uh in the uh, comments or on the uh, forum 
um, thread where you can talk to Vincent about his book. By the way, if you jump on over to the EV blog forum, there'll be a link below in the video. And uh, I'm sure Vincent, who is a regular there, will uh, answer any questions you may have about the book. And I'd love to know um, how much work was involved. Well, I know the answer. It's a lot. And uh, how long it took you to uh, uh, write this thing. So, and, and compile it. Um, you obviously had a lot of uh, info, as you said at the start, with slides and everything. But this really, there's a lot of uh, work in producing this as well, let alone actually writing it. So X-ray, talking about pick and place machines and feeders, inspection cameras, trays, bulk cassettes, pill boxes, all that sort of stuff. It's all there. ESD stuff, good, excellent. It's, uh, we go into all sorts of ESD handling, how to uh, proper set up an ESD system. Wow, this covers pretty much everything you'd want for uh, all the practical aspects of um, electronics engineering, not just uh, surface mount um, stuff, really. It's, you know, dealing with all the practical aspects of, uh, of setting up a lab and uh, designing boards, reflow, parts placement, all that sort of jazz. The various different uh, types for reflow, uh, soldering, your glue placement. It's all there. Through whole part, uh, liquid uh, solder wave as well. Um, and uh, double-sided loaded boards with a double-sided surface mount with uh, liquid solder wave. Oh, all the different techniques are there. The different dielectric constants of all your boards and your board uh, stack up with your pre-peg and your copper foils. It's all there. And chemical processing. Uh, and uh, the stages you go through to manufacture a professional board, light source, aperture, the old fashioned uh, aperture, uh, photo plotter stuff. Does anyone still use photo plotters these days? I thought they were all uh, raster uh, based these days. I'm not sure anyone does the old photo, uh, the old uh, method anymore. Any PCB manufacturers or uh, film manufacturers anyway? I don't know. Let me know. And all your, ver yeah, all your various um, blind and varied buried vias, I'm sure, strip copper plating, how to uh, do through hole plating on your boards, which of course is uh, not easy to do yourself. So I don't think he's going to go into details of possibly, you know, plating your own boards and stuff like that. But all the detail in there, all those practical aspects that you never learn in uh, engineering course, solder, reflow soldering um, uh, thermal profiles. I've done a bit on that before and uh, tombstoning the different uh, failure modes, hum humidity inside a uh, part can uh, cause it to expand and crack the chip. Yeah, I don't think he's missed a thing, folks. This is incredibly comprehensive. I love it. Uh, laser trimming resistors, thick film, thin film, the uh, differences between the different types of resistors. So. Oh, it's got a handy uh, table for all your uh, E ranges, E6, E12, E24, 48, 96, and E192. Woo! Oh my goodness, electrolytic capacitors, how they all... This is a great book. I am thoroughly impressed. Wow. It, I, I only need a quick glance through to know that it's, um, it's incredibly comprehensive and... Uh, Vincent is one uh, smart cookie, so he does know what he's talking about. He's been in the business for a long time. And uh, I am sure that this book is uh, very technically um, accurate as well. And then we get into some projects. Workbench setup. Uh, and that's probably one of the boards we've got in there. We've probably got one of these uh, surface mount demo boards. But anyway, that is the book. That is absolutely Brilliant, Vincent. I'm very, very, very impressed. What have I been yapping on for eight minutes continuous there now? And uh, that is great. I think I'm going to highly recommend that one, Mastering Surface Mount Technology, even though there's more to it than just surface mount stuff. Awesome, Vincent. Let's take a look at the board now. Oh, folks, look what we have here. This looks exciting. We've got a ring light. Where, let me get this board out of here, you bastard. That's not a ah, thermally bonded bloody thing. Hate those. But luckily, I had a knife handy. And here it is. It's a ring light. Awesome. So, eurocircuits.com, P2, 
PWM master in SMT, it's a PWM dimmer, and all these LEDs, you solder them around the outside there. This is a great example of a uh, circular board and how you uh, panelize with the breakout tabs a circular board. In fact, you've got multiple boards in here. You've got like this, probably a driver board. I don't know, haven't inspected that yet, but um, they've got uh, three boards in the one panel there. And that says panel two, I guess. Is there another panel? I'm not sure. But uh, we've got a whole bunch of parts that uh, go with that and they've all got uh, individual uh, bomb lists in there. So that is terrific. They're all, se oh, they're the three separate boards. Okay, that's why we've got three packets to go with those three boards. Oh, I'm gonna have to build this. That's a double-sided load too. There you go. Components both sides. So that's a really good example. And what do we have here? We've got a solder paste stencil, folks. Here is an example of a stainless steel. Looks like stainless steel. Stainless steel are the uh, expensive ones. R Rolf Harris wobble board there. Let's, uh, you know, let's do some old Rolf Harris. Timey kangaroo down, spot. Timey kangaroo down. Timey kangaroo down, spot. Timey kangaroo down. All right, I'll, um, I won't uh, subject you to any more of my singing, but there you go. This is an example of a stainless, a professional stainless steel solder paste stencil. These are what they are. Uh, I've shown um, in my um, tour of um, the surface mount board manufacturing facility. Um, you've seen these um, stencils, stainless steel paste stencils before. These are alignment holes here. They whack it in there. A big paste squidgy comes over there. Well, your board, your board goes under the bottom like that. Go, this goes over the top and it applies, the squidgy applies stain, uh, paste, solder paste through the stainless steel stencil onto your board. And uh, they're usually done by an automated machine, but you can do those by hand, of course. Um, and if you want to do your own uh, uh, solder paste um, stencils, you wouldn't do it in uh, stainless steel, but uh, you can get mylar and other uh, types available these days. And oh, there's the extra one for the uh, circular board in there. And uh, I've done videos on that sort of stuff before, my PCB manufacturing tutorial and stuff like that. So there you go, that's awesome um, example kit. I love it, that is great. And here is the schematic for the ring light project, project number four. And let's take a look at it. It uses a uh, Micril, there you go, a Micril uh, constant current uh, uh, PWM driver, I'm sure it is if you looked it up, and then a PIC uh, 12F683 to control the thing. And it's got various modes, power, memory mode, and up and down, and you can you know, set various modes that you can adjust, uh, dim the LEDs, and probably turn various ones off or on, and set different modes. So there's not much to the schematic, but uh, this one goes into all the details of how to assemble this ball, because it's an assembly tutorial. And uh, given that this one uh, comes with the uh, stainless steel stencils, then this one's actually designed um, for, you know, a paste, it's, it's a solder paste tutorial, how to do your own boards using solder paste. And there it is, you tape them down to the bench like that, and you can apply the paste over it, preparing the board for the stencil application. Excellent. It's all step by step. And there you go, the next step is applying the stainless steel stencil over the top like that. You of course put these uh, two boards on the side here to make it the same uh, height, of course, as the main board. So if you're using a 1.6 millimeter board under there, you'd have two 1.6 millimeter boards on the same, so it's all even height. Or if you had, you know, a 0.8 millimeter board, a thin one, you'd put thin boards on the side and then, and there's the example of using a small uh, little uh, putty knife or uh, squidgy there to apply the paste onto it and it gives you you know advice on how to uh, you know use the correct angle to steep of angle of attack and then the paste uh, retracts out and uh, forcing the paste using a different angle neat it's all there great little tutorial on how to apply solder paste and there it is after the solder paste application what you need to do inspecting uh, uh, the solder paste um, deposition there when you know to make sure it's on every pad and then misprints, and then we get down into parts placement down here. So, tells you how to place all the parts, and then go over it with the uh, hot air gun 
set to, yeah, it recommends about 50 degrees higher than the melting uh, point of the solder that you're actually using. And there it is. And then doing the through hole parts as well. And it looks like thermal pads, thermal vias. So talking about all that, it's all there. There you go. That is terrific. Now I was going to uh, rush and um, assemble this thing just so I could show it working. But it's a bit of a shame if I just soldered it by hand and I didn't use these, stain these brilliant stainless steel um, stencils. So um, really, I think I'm going to save that for an entirely separate video where I um, demonstrate how to do um, solder paste application using a stainless steel stencil like this on the board. There you go. Thank you very much, uh, Elector and Vincent in particular. I checked the price of this thing. It's about 42 US dollars if you're an Elector member of whatever Elector thing it is, um, or about $47 if you're not a member. So I reckon that is an absolute winner, and Vincent has nailed that. And it's not just about surface mount technology, it's about all sorts of practical electronics PCB applications. Thumbs up! So I hope you enjoyed that uh, mailbag segment. Sorry if I didn't open your mail. I have a whole bunch of it left. I could do another two or three mailbag videos. I'll try and do those as soon as I possibly can. And if you like mailbag segment, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.